Hey there friends, how's it going? David Potts here with Song Notes, and I want to answer a question on the topic of memorizing song lyrics and if there is an efficient way to do that. So Alan sent this question in over on my Song Notes community forum. So Alan, thanks for your support, number one, and uh, I hope this answer helps you out. Number one, paper. Paper is a big, big, big recommendation for me. Number one on the list here. Okay, I publish uh, I song notes, and it's literally what I make here is these print-friendly guides, these song sheets, right? I have uh, over 150 of these. Um, I write up the lyrics for all the songs. I, I learn and teach, you know, make video lessons for. Obviously, this is a little bit of a plug for my song sheets. But the reason I make those song sheets and now that I sell them is because I was making them anyway before I ever had any entrepreneurial or business goals. And the whole reason was, you know, look at the video I made on the the paper songbook I made during college, right? As I learned these songs, these are songs I loved, me writing out the lyrics, typing them up in that case. But even if I type them and I print them, that still counts as paper, right? So getting things on paper, whether you buy my song sheets, which you don't have to do, you can get the lyrics, copy and paste them, put them into Google Docs, right? Now, there are some things I do recommend doing, right? Formatting the song into, you know, so there's enough lyrics on each line so you don't have three pages worth of, uh, of, uh, of, of lyrics, right? That's not efficient, right? I do recommend if you can get a single piece of paper with all the lyrics on them, that's gonna be your friend. Now, that's a sort of uh, principle I use with all my song sheets is I make the lyrics fit on one page, right? Um, another thing about paper that's really important is the formatting, right? When I say formatting, I mean a big thing I like to do is use indentation to separate verses from choruses, right? Or pre-choruses or, or bridges, right? There's different sections of songs. And usually those use different chord progressions and they have a sort of different tonal vibe, so to speak. But I think this can help you and it can help your brain as you're sort of going through the process of memorizing, see the fact that, okay, this song has three verses, right? The choruses I kind of have memorized already, but it's those three verses, maybe that second and third verse, right? And when it's indented and you can see those gaps on the page, I think it creates this sort of spatial sense of things. So um, whether you print them out yourself, whether you buy my song sheets, uh, or you write them down yourself. I know that that's a bit of a, a, of a stretch, right? It takes a long time to do, but it's like one of those things where I remember back in the day before smartphones and Google Maps where at MapQuest, I would write out the directions a lot of the time, or even before MapQuest with the old like atlases we would have in our cars. The act of writing out directions lots of times would render the need for the directions to be mostly gone in certain cases because it's like that act of writing it down uh, I, I'm not a memoriologist or, or whatever the, the profession is, but in my experience, the act of putting a bit of investment into getting the lyrics captured in a physical sense, if possible, uh, is super, super helpful, okay? And that paper aspect is gonna carry on to some of the next uh, bits of advice I have here, okay? And one of those is going to be listening along with the song and singing or talking through the lyrics as they're happening. And if you can, bring the paper lyrics with you, right? And that's incredibly important because if you're trying to remember the third verse of Graceland and Paul Simon starts singing really fast about tumbling and turmoil and... If you don't know what he's saying and you're trying to listen to him and like understand the words and then also like have those words take root in your brain, uh, that's going to be a big ask, right? So you want the source of truth, right? It, it's information is abundant and free in this world, in this modern age. If you can, if you have a printer, that's great. If you don't have one, just go to the library or, or do a bulk printing job at Office Depot or something or whatever you have to do. But get, I, I really think it's helpful. Get the piece of paper, keep it with you, right? Now, when I learn my songs, uh, when I'm creating my song sheets, typically I am learning the songs kind of around the same time. And I'll typically get my lesson. I mean, I'm kind of doing a lot, but I do this professionally. This is what I do. I've been learning a song every week or two for the last many years. So I'm able to juggle a lot, so to speak. But I will say that I am sort of planning my lessons at the same time as working out how I want to sort of teach the song, in many cases, at the same time of memorizing the lyrics. Now, I told you not to do this, right? But uh, again, because I've been doing it so often, I, I sort of think that I'm the exception rather than the rule. But I, say, I bring all this up not to give myself a pat on the back, but to say I am marking up the song sheets all the time. And part of it's with formatting notes. I want to make this line fit or I want to add strumming patterns on page one here. But another thing I'm doing is just calling out, you know, marking out the lyrics or the lines or the sections that are giving me a hard time. So so don't feel like the piece of paper is something that is uh, you can't write on or you can't fold up, right? I mean, treat it like something that is serving you, okay? It's information. Uh, listen to the song, top to bottom, right? 
as you go through each word, listen along. And even if you're not singing, just sort of pay attention and talk through the lyrics. I mean, even if you're talking in your head, but give it your full attention. That's a really important thing that I wanted to make sure is captured there. So with full attention. Now, like I said, if you're learning guitar at the same time or you're learning the song at the same time, be careful. If you're biting off way too much with the chord changes or the strumming, your brain's not going to be able to focus that extra bandwidth on the lyrics. So be careful of that, right? Use just simple strums, right? Even with the lyrics, you could kind of just talk through them or hum through them, but sort of follow along you know, go through each line like a bouncing ball as the artist sings it, okay? Um, but I, I really think if you pick a song you want to learn, you get the lyrics printed out, right? You listen to the song. If you do it a couple times a day, two or three times a day, and you do it, say, four or five days in a row, after the first time or two, you might not feel like you're making that much progress, but give it a day or two or three. You're going to start to notice that, okay, I got the choruses down, that first verse I have down, it's really that second and third verse. That's usually the way it is for me, right? Where those are the ones I have trouble with, but that's okay. That's where you can sort of uh, put your energy. And that's the next real topic I have, which is breaking things into chunks, right? Don't feel like you have to go from top to bottom every time through the song. Um, if you have a certain part really solidly memorized, or if it all just seems like too much, just break it into chunks. Memorize the first verse and the chorus, for example, right? Start the song over, do it again. Start the song over, do it again. And I really think having that piece of paper, you're going to start to associate like spatially parts of the, uh, of the song that are, you know, giving you trouble versus parts you're comfortable with. Hey friends, one thing I wanted to add here as I'm editing is a way that you can put all this together is then to test yourself, right? So uh, assuming you've done the work, right? You've printed out the lyrics or written them down. You've listened along to the song a few times. You're starting to feel comfortable. Now comes the point of testing yourself, right? Now you can do this by putting the song on and trying to sing along, right? Now if you're at full speed, it's going to be a bit more tricky. One thing that I found successful for myself when I was uh, I was a busboy at Bertucci's in Columbia, Maryland in 1999, uh, senior year of high school, right? I was very bored during that job in my brain because you're just clearing tables. You never had to talk to anyone. So what I would do is I would kind of do a concert in my head where I would pick a song that I you know, was listening to a lot. And I kind of knew the lyrics to. And I would just test myself to go through the song at any pace. But I had to keep the ball moving forward. Even if it was a slow version of uh, He Went to Paris by Jimmy Buffett, I would go through from beginning to end and the cruel uh, difficulty level I applied on myself was if I made a mistake, I would start the song over. And I'm literally talking the song through in my head or singing it in my head, right? But it would force me to pay attention, to bring the focus and the attention to the actual lyrics, not forget where I was, not daydream. Again, this may be my own neuroses as far as just keeping myself entertained as I was clearing people's empty pizza plates at a, you know, when I'm working at a restaurant. But it was really helpful for just going through songs and being able to get through them and seeing where I was. Sometimes I would just totally forget a lyric and I had to go home, look at the printout again, or whatever I did back in 1999. But my point is, once you've put in the work, eventually you want to test yourself, but you can take it slow, right? Either listen along, slow the song down, you can use the gear on YouTube, or just do a slow version in your head. You can do single strums on the guitar too. Whatever you have to do, but try to um, assess where you are. Are there areas you're still making a mistake at? If so, study that part and do it over, you know, just practice that part individually with the song sheet, right? But you put into practice and you will get it, all right? So let's get back to the video. I have a few more uh, points that are kind of just repeating a lot of the similar themes, but I wanted to add this in editing because I do think this is important. All right, let's go. Now, another one I want to bring up here is, um, integrating guitar slowly. And I kind of hinted at this before, right? But when you start to, if your goal is to play along uh, with the lyrics, just make sure you know the guitar part really well. Now, learning that on its own is its own separate thing. You can put on the song, don't worry about the lyrics, just worry about playing along. And a lot of the same principles apply. Slow it down if you need to, break it into chunks, don't bite off more than you can chew as far as remembering the chords, the progression, the strumming, and singing and getting the melody right. Like, that's a lot, right? Take the lyrics, take the, the vocal part off the table, get to the point where you can play along with the song. It's okay if you have to slow it down, but uh, get to the point where you can do it without sort of messing up over, you know, a few times, right? And then you can start bringing in the lyrics. Maybe you start humming them at first, right? Get, get comfortable vocalizing the melody and then get to a point where assuming you know the lyrics on their own and assuming you can play the guitar on your own, then you combine them. 
Now it's tricky and I do have a separate lesson and I'll put it in the description here about strumming and singing at the same time. This is another related topic where you're combining very diff different physical disciplines where you know, you're strumming, you're changing chords, um, and you are singing. And usually the singing is happening in its own sort of rhythmic pockets, right? Like a sort of running back going through, you know, getting through the line into the field. Like, and the, uh, the rhythm is happening. And, and when the things are sort of not always in sync, right? When the lyrics are being sung, not always matching the strums, it can cause us to sort of break down and be like, man, my, my, my strumming falters or my lyrics falter, right? So again, you wanna learn things individually so that you can automate them, you can do them without thinking, and then you can combine them, which is rough at first, but give it time, practice them individually if you need to. So I'll put that, uh, that uh, video in the description here, and uh, this is a great sort of complimentary topic there. Now, the other thing I'll say is, um, Alan, for my song sheets, and I'm not unique in doing this, I will write the chords above the lyrics, right? Or sometimes I'll write them in line, like on the same line if, if space is an issue. This is telling you basically when or which syllable to play which chord on. And that's really important as you do eventually combine the lyrics with the chords because memorizing lyrics is one thing, but knowing when to change chords is yet another thing. And then learning strumming, like I said, it's a whole separate thing where you have to learn the strumming pattern in a way where you can automate it and do it without thinking here. So uh, those are my overall tips, right? And um, I think I covered the main ones I would have. Now, uh, if you have any additional questions, Alan, or anyone else, let me know. Um, again, uh, the Song Notes community forum, I want to give a plug to that. All the members of Song Notes uh, Premium on my songnotes.net website have access to that form. Um, you can post questions there, put song requests in. It's a great way to sort of uh, interact with the rest of the Song Notes community too. It's a very positive place. You can share your progress, uh, give feedback on lessons, and that's where I answer most of the questions because I get so many um, and I want to really make sure that the community members uh, on the site are really getting uh, taken care of as much as I can. So, and uh, thank you all very much for watching, for commenting. Alan, thank you for the support, and I hope you found this helpful. If anyone else has any tips or suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments, but I will see you all in the next one, and it is sweating here, so I'm going to take off and have dinner with my family. So until next time, my friends, take care, and bye-bye.